Hey guys and welcome back and in this video we're going to build on what we did last video with classes and we're now going to create a new class called an event and what we're going to use this event for is we're going to be able to create events within the game and then we'll be able to simply check in each part of the clock whether the events are happening at this time so what we can do is we can check them against the calendar so we can create an event on say the 3rd of june at 12 o'clock and then we can simply check to see whether that it, that time is correct for that event and then if that event is correct then we can uh, trigger an event so what we can do is we're going to come into our our uh, events to rpy file and we're going to create a new class and we're going to call it an event and it will have to inherit from object as well so when we initialize this class we want it to have an hour a day a month a function to be triggered and or no we'll, we'll call this a block to save you guys from uh, misinterpreting what I'm saying on that one and then we'll have an is active flag as well so that we can turn an event on or off if we need to say it's an event that reoccurs every week we can turn it on or off as necessary and you can add other properties like if this event is weekly if it's daily so on and so forth then you can just have those flags set to true or false but for this purpose we're going to just use what we've got here to save it getting too complicated so like before we need to tell python that these values are equal to oh dear sausage fingers today month equals month self dot block equals block self dot is active is active coolio so now what we need to do is we need to create an event uh, a, a event checker so we'll create a new class method a new method called date check and we're going to pass into this just the calendar which we'll call c in this method now what we want to do is because we know that the only thing that we're ever going to pass into this method is the calendar itself we can say fairly safely um, in reference properties within the calendar so what we're going to say is if self dot day equals now we need to check what the output of the calendar is so we want to we want a day number of the week so it's days and oh, we need to make sure that that's a double equals as well self dot hour equals c dot hours and again make sure we're putting in the double equals there and self dot months equals c dot month return true and all we're doing with this is we're saying in this class for this particular event for this instance of the event class is the day the same as the current day the hour the same as the current hour and the month the same as the current month that's literally all that event that's all that event class needs now we come back into our scripts we can create a new event so we're going to call this one event one for simplicity's sake equals an event if I can type event correctly now let's have a look at the properties that we need so we need an hour a day a month a block and is active so we'll say it's going to happen at 12 o'clock on the second day or the third day because it starts at zero 
on the first month the block is going to be a string and it's going to be ev1 and then we know it is active like so and we we, we aren't actually using the is active flag at the moment but if we were we would simply add and is active equals true to the end of this check here in fact you know what we're going to do that now just so that you get a self dot is active that's all we need to do there and now the event must be true in order for that event to happen that's that simple so now in our game running code we're going to type in if event one dot date check I'm putting in our calendar call expression event one dot function and now we need to create our label uh, to a tag so we'll call this ev1 and we're just going to simply put in this is event one block of code in fact no that's not function is block see I nearly I nearly got carried away there okay so now theoretically let's look at our code very quickly so we've created a new class called event the event has an hour a day a month a code block associated with it and is active when we reference this we call a date check we say is it the right day the right hour the right month and is the event active if that's true then it returns true and we're going to put else statement here so if, if not all of those things are true we'll put return false just to make absolutely 100 percent sure that it's returning false if not all of these are correct like so so in this script what we're doing is we've created our event it's going to every loop it's going to call that event's date check function and if the date check returns true it's going to call the block that we defined here ev1 which we have created here and it will say this is event one's block and if we really wanted to be thorough we could then say event one dot is active equals false to set that as false or alternatively we could come back to our event item and we could say event set inactive like that inactive is one word we don't need a capital a there self dot is active equals false like that now we could simply say like so and then that will set that inactive for us and then it means that anyone reading this code will know what's happening there without having to see a bunch of equals is pluses and so on and so forth so if we run that code now assuming that I haven't made any typos we can click away through and on day three at 12 o'clock this is event one's block so it's now checked that event boom done and that my friends is another really really useful thing that we can do with classes I hope you found this video useful in the next video we'll look at using lists and classes in tandem with each other in a different way to create multiple instances of the event class